back at uh, Waste to Worth and especially here at University of Minnesota. Um, well, my name is Nick Elger. I'm manager of the AgStar program and actually went to school here at the University of Minnesota, graduated uh, about five years ago, and it's kind of coming full circle for me. I uh, did some research in college. I had studied abroad in Nepal, um, did some, some research on small scale anaerobic digestion there, and now here I am at, at EPA AgStar program, which is really one of the federal government's uh, most prominent and programs dedicated to helping to support the anaerobic digestion industry. And so um, excited to be here um, and talk with you about some of the trends going on in the U.S. livestock industry. So I'll give you a little bit of an overview of AgStar, um, who we are, and some of the things we're working on, uh, an overview of the U.S. biogas industry and the livestock sector. Uh, talk through a couple of innovative business models um, that are uh, deployed on farms in the U.S., and then touch on some of the AgStar resources that we have available um, to, to everyone here in the room and across the country. So AgStar, we are a voluntary program at EPA, which is kind of unique. Most of EPA is a regulatory program, but we are non-regulatory. So we work with industry, we work with um, private developers, nonprofits, <coughs> and state government agencies, all with uh, the goal of helping to uh, advance economically, environmentally sound management of manure and largely for the better part of our program that's been supporting the development of anaerobic digester projects. Um, and so we have a ton of tools and resources that are available. Um, and we have, uh, we're always open to try, trying to help out, um, get projects going and, and anything in your area. So please feel free to reach out with, to us with any questions or if you need any help in anything, that's, that's what we're here for. So again, why is, EPA and, Ag and AgStar interested in biogas. Well, the population's growing, and so is our consumption of food. Across the U.S., um, the number of animals, the amount of food waste continues to increase. Uh, USDA just did their Ag Census um, and published that a few weeks ago. And in the U.S., there's over 9 million dairy cows, 72 million pigs, and over 9 billion chickens and other poultry. So that's a lot of manure that has to be managed. Um, they also did an estimate, uh, USDA and EPA estimated how much food waste is produced in the U.S. And over 133 billion pounds of food is wasted at the retail and consumer level. So, you know, right now, how is that being managed? A lot of it's being managed in ways that can be harmful to the environment, emitting methane. As you can see um, on the pie chart on the right there, this is a... Uh, it, um, a graph from the US EPA's inventory of greenhouse gas emissions. You can see manure management, landfills, and enteric fermentation um, from livestock and uh, management of manure makes up over half of the methane emissions in the US. Uh, methane is uh, 28 times greater global warming potential than carbon dioxide. So there's a great opportunity to capture that methane and use it beneficially. So biogas systems on farms in the U.S. Carlton gave away my surprise. I was going to ask the audience how many digesters are on farms in the U.S. So uh, we estimate that there's about 250 on farms. But we also did a market uh, assessment of the potential for digesters on farms in the U.S., on dairy and, and hog farms. Anybody have a guess of how many are possible? This is based on about a farm with 500 cows or 2,000 pigs. We guess we estimate that there's about potential for over 8,100 digesters on farms across the U.S. And if all of those 8,100 digesters um, are built, it could produce enough electricity to power over a million homes, or enough renewable natural gas to fuel two million passenger cars. So what's happening in the U.S. market? You know, these next couple of slides, I want to just go over some of the trends that um, have happened um, in the past in the digester sector, and how we got to where we are today, where we are today, and what the future looks like for the digester market as best as, I, as we can forecast out. So here's a graph of uh, the U.S. digester livestock, um, number of uh, digesters on farms in the U.S. AgStar has a database where we've been tracking since 1994 uh, projects in the U.S. And over the first part of the 2000s, up until about 2013, we saw steady growth. Um, and a lot of that was due to state renewable portfolio standards, 
um, higher energy prices, which which equivalated to um, uh, better, more favorable power purchase agreements. Um, but right around 2013 or 20, 2009, 2010, some of the, and through 2012, some of those uh, state incentives dried up, um, and renewable natural gas prices plummeted from fracking. Um, and that caused a lot of the power purchase agreements that um, digesters were, um, and farmers and, and developers were trying to get to make projects on un uneconomical. And so, you know, over the past um, several years, it's also been difficult with the low milk prices and fluctuating commodity prices for farmers to, to get grants and loan or to get loans and, and funding for projects. So, and this is the, the net number of digesters. This includes the number of new projects as, all, as well as projects that have shut down. Um, and um, so we're, we're starting to see that um, you know, in 2018, there's a trend is starting to go up. And over these next couple of slides, I'll show that you know, we think that, that the number of digests in the US could double and potentially triple in the next couple of years here. So there are a lot of positives to, to looking forward. And I was talking at lunch today with um, some people, and I think you know, looking back at this this last graph, we saw a steady increase, and I think we've leveled off over the, next, the last couple of years. I think there's there's definitely optimism, and um, that that growth curve is going to take off again for a number of reasons. <coughs> One of the largest drivers is renewable natural gas. So, driven by the uh, renewable fuel standard, national renewable fuel standard, and California's low carbon fuel standard credit. Just to give an example, um, in California. There's 75, over 75 projects that are planned or under construction. So, um, also companies like Smithfield Foods, um, they have uh, you know, created a program and a, a company to help, um, partnering with uh, Dominion Energy to help build uh, a thousand covered lagoon digesters on uh, a lot of their farms across the U.S. Um, some of the other trends, co-digestion, you know, so bringing in food waste. And, and two farms to the digesters, digesters that are existing, or building business models that incorporate them from the start. Also, increase of third-party owned and operated systems. So, for the better part of digesters in the U.S., it's um, kind of been uh, digester developers will help develop projects and kind of hand it off to, to farmers to operate on their own. You know, digest uh, farmers have a lot to worry about besides. Uh, managing a digester. So there's, there's some new companies that are um, starting to really take this on, and, and that's really what's going to make these digester systems operate in the long run and be successful um, to take some of that risk off of the farmer and also invest in the project as well, too, so it's not all on the farmer. And then uh, interest by the dairy industry, co-ops, utilities, and, and others throughout the value chain to be partial investors in, in digester projects. We're starting to see some more of that as well too. Um, and then lastly, the, the Farm Bill, which recently came out. So there's bipartisan support for biogas systems, um, both Republicans and, and Democrats. Um, the Farm Bill was published, uh, expressed interest in supporting programs to help educate and, and to build more digesters. So hopefully that will, um, those some of those things will roll out here so soon as well. So these next couple of slides, I just want to go over some innovative business models of, of digester projects across the country. Um, some models that, that we think are going to really um, are showing promise that others I hope can can learn from and take some of those some some of those lessons learned to, to help diversify revenue and share some of those risks and rewards. So like I mentioned, third party owned and operated systems um, taking advantage of eco markets for the digestate and co products. Um, and then cluster projects and taking advantage of economies of scale. So let's start with the, the third party model. And this is uh, a farm up in Deerfield, Massachusetts. Um, it uh, was built in 2016 by Vanguard Renewables. And they um, have an arrangement with the farm to be a partial investor. Both Vanguard Renewables and the farmer have invested in this project. And it's a, a relatively small farm. I mean, 250 cows are, are milked at this uh, uh, at this farm, and the, the manure goes to the digester. But you can see at the bottom, they're they're bringing in over 30,000 tons of food waste per year. And so that food waste is helping to make uh, this project economical because it boosts biogas production. Um, 
So this next graphic kind of talks a little bit about the model and say how this type of system, this closed loop system works. So at the top there, there's the farm and the farm, the cows produce the milk. Milk goes to Cabot Creamery and the manure goes to the digester, which, which is owned and operated by Vanguard Renewables. In exchange, Vanguard Renewables sends electricity, heat, and the, the digestate back to the farmer. And renewable energy also goes on the grid, which goes to the Cabot Creamery and to the grocery stores um, in the area. Cabot Creamery then sends the food to the grocery stores. The grocery stores then send the organic waste back to the digester, um, really completing the cycle. So the nutrients um, go back into the soil. The electricity is used by those companies and, and farm that are producing uh, the products. So it's a, it's a really great model that they have there. And um, they're expanding a lot. Um, they have several new projects that are coming online pretty soon. Another one, um, another gentleman earlier touched on cow pots, but it's a really, really cool um, business model that they have have there. And Agstar, we, we shared a video on our website. Um, it kind of is really interesting. If you want to learn a little bit more, you can, you can check it out on our pro project profiles. But it's a small farm in Connecticut. Again, only 300, and 300 cows feeding the digester, but they're creating a product from the digestate, really, which is their primarily primary source of income, cow pots. Um, so they're biodegradable planter pots um, that are digested from, you know, from digested manure solids. And they're selling these on, on Amazon and, and really, really, I guess, across the world. And so it's a really interesting business model, um, you know, taking advantage of the digestate side of things. There's a number of groups that are trying to take advantage of the nutrient side of things as well, too. And I think that is going to be another driver in the future for the, the building of digesters as state lawmakers look at how can we solve some of these water issues and um, really take advantage of all the benefits that besides just energy the digesters provide. And the last business model I want to touch on, here's an example of a cluster model in California. So this is California Bioenergy. They're a firm in California um, that has, has started to build a, a cluster of projects in California. So they have about 15, and I think they have now looped in a few more, up to 17 large dairy farms. And these are these are on a massive scale of anywhere from 3,000 to over 10,000 <laughs> 10, um, heads of dairy cow um, per farm. And each farm is building a, a covered lagoon digester and um, uh, sending the biogas, each farm, to a centralized gas cleanup facility where um, all the farms are investing in the uh, gas cleanup facility. It's cleaned up there, injected into the pipeline. And the gas cleanup facility will also be right along Highway I-5, which is a major uh, freeway through the Central Valley of, of California where um, trucks and cars can stop and fill up, as well as the um, milk hauling trucks from each of these farms. It's going to be, are gonna, the fleet is going to be transfer, transformed to uh, CNG vehicles. So. And there's just talking with someone from the California Department, Department of Food and Agriculture, and they're putting out quite a bit of money to, to fund digester projects in California. But there's, I think, seven more clusters that are forming in California right now. So it's something to keep an eye on uh, for those types of business models to learn from. So the last part of my presentation, I just want to go through some of the resources that AgStar has developed um, to help uh, educate and um, to be of, of help to help building more digesters. So one of our primary resources is our project development um, anaerobic, anaerobic digester database. Um, so in here we try to keep track of the, uh, the digesters across the country as best we can. Um, everything from when the digester was built, what type of digester it is, try to get the number of animals that are feeding that digester and um, from that we can create a number of tools like our digester map. This is an interactive map on our website where you can see where projects, digesters are located in your area. So I'd encourage you to take a look and, and see where those, where those digesters are. Um, we also have developed a number of, of project profiles uh, on, on some of the projects that I spoke about today and, and others. Um, you know, pretty short, two to four pages, um, just kind of talking, touching on a lot of the, the uh, the key aspects of the digester systems um, and try to, try to have an, um, a variety of, of profiles.
profiles that we've developed on dairy, swine, and um, uh, poultry in different parts of the country. We also have a meat and operator series where we've interviewed a number of operators of digesters across the country and gotten their insights in, into you know, what it takes to successfully run a digester. These are um, some of the most interesting uh, resources we have on our website because a lot of times they talk about well, what didn't work and they have a lot of great stories of the things that they've tried because I'm not sure the folks in here that have run digesters know a lot of things can go wrong and there's a lot of lessons that we can learn. Um, so I would encourage you, encourage you to take a look at those and, and learn from some of their experiences. We also have a vendor directory which is a compilation of um, uh, digester developers, consultants, and others in the industry that can be of help and it's sortable. Um, also, another resource that I would encourage you all to, to check out, and we have a link to it on our website, is Nutrients Technology Catalog. And this is a, an old screenshot, sounds like they just updated their website, but that is a, a really incredible um, tool for helping to just determine what digester can work best for your unique needs and um, what, what some of the reputable companies are that you can work with. So, a lot of, one of the number one questions Agstar gets is, you know, how do we, you know, where do we go? How do we, how do we, who do we go to to build some of these digesters? So this is a really good um, third party independent verified source to, to help answer some of those questions. A couple of new resources that we're updating and, and coming out with is our Agstar Project Development Handbook. So, this is really uh, uh, intended for anyone that's working in the ag or renewable energy sector that's intro, interested in anaerobic digestion, and, you know, how the operations work, um, and what some of the technical questions that you need to, to ask when putting together a digester, and thinking about the, the feedstocks and the energy side, and the interconnection, and a lot, all of the things that, that sort of are, man, are necessary for having a successful project. We try to, try to document a lot of those in an easy to read format, and we hope that that will come out um, sometime possibly this summer uh, or later this year. And then one of the last resources we're developing is an anaerobic digester operator guidebook. Again, one of the, the challenges for operating digester or for, for digesters is operating them. And uh, there's a number of, of really great trainings that have gone on uh, across the country. Cornell is putting on some short courses and they've come out with uh, some guidance as well too. But Agstar is trying to put together a, a guidebook um, to help um, be used in plain language um, about some of the things you need to think about when operating a digester. Um, and that will be coming out later this year as well. So, thank you. We have time for a couple questions. Do you guys have, do you guys figure out a way to report on the economics of these projects or systems? Yeah, we, we've tried to do that. And, um, we're working, you know, the, the hard thing is um, trying to decipher between estimated project costs, which is a lot of times publicly available, um, and then what the actual diagnosis would cost. And there's a big difference between that. You know, um, so that's one of the things we would like to, to try to try to get done, but um, haven't been able to put out something that comprehensively takes care of both the cost between projects and um, the variability between estimated costs. And Well, yeah, that's number one. Yeah, they don't like to share that, the actual cost, for sure. Um, and so, you know, yeah, the other challenge is, you know, everyone asks, you know, what does it cost to build a digester? It's so site-specific and so unique to the situation. Um, you know, so many add-ons that you can put that it's almost better, you know, we've kind of taken the approach, it's almost better not to, to put, necessarily put all that information in here because it's so bad. I assume that acts are looking at an anaerobic digester from one of your early slides. It's a uh, broad for the brand new on a lot of different things on the side. Yeah. Have you yeah. looking into any of the other technologies? Yeah, we haven't a whole lot yet, but um, it's one of the things I was actually talking with Jeff Porter on. What other alternatives do we to practice to help reduce energy emissions? And that's ultimately our goal. And you know, as a number of speakers have, have talked about, you know, no solution is right here. Your situation, so that's something that we would like to work with others on and develop some of those other uh, resources on alternative energy practices. But right now, a lot of our resources are focused on energy digestion. 
Very good. Thank you. Right. Thank Thanks. you. Let's thank Nick for his time.